On this episode of Beyond the Check, we ventured out to the edge of Georgia and found ourselves in the small island community of Tybee Island, a place that was once referred to as Truck Stop by the Sea and Redneck Riviera. It has in recent years become a hotbed for real estate and revitalization. As the island becomes more upscale, some locals cling to the rustic past, while others have embraced both sides of the equation, such as the new and upcoming restaurant effectively hailing as Seawolf. It has made a name for itself by delivering a sense of high and low brow fusion. Located just as you enter the island to your right, it is owned and run by some of the finest gentlemen Tybee has to offer. Mixologist Andrew Ripley, Everyman Tom Worley, Manager Oscar Ochoa, and their chef Rob Milena, who serves up everything from vegan ramen to Wagyu hot dogs. His culinary concoctions are a magical blend of fun and fancy. So get set to learn some new things, because it's okay if you don't know what a sea wolf is, as long as you're willing to learn. Hi, I'm Rashawn Parker, writer, filmmaker, and foodie. I also worked in the service industry for over 20 years. From buster and dishwasher, prep cook, server, bartender, and manager, you name it, I've done it. So now I'm hitting the road. Find some of the best local favorite worker-owned restaurants across the country. Find out about their lives, the history of the restaurant, and of course, cook up and try some of the best dishes they have to offer. So join me, my wife and crew, as we go Beyond the Check, Worker Owner Edition. Can't talk right now, I'm doing hot girl shit. We are that hot girl shit. I'm all tidy. <laughs> <laughs> so we are gonna go meet uh, the owners who, let's see if I can get this right. There's gonna be uh, Ricardo, uh, Andrew, and Thomas are the owners. And then we're also gonna meet their fantastic chef, Rob, who's gonna be cooking us up some amazing dishes. Uh, but before we do that, I'm going to pick up one of their brand new servers who's been friends with them for years. His name is Ryan. And uh, let's pick up Ryan. Woo! Oh, if you know this, this guy's got a real face for radio. <laughs> Crushing it, NPR. You hear that? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I got Ryan Scamenti here. Ryan, what do you do at Seawolf? Um, I actually I help like uh, bus tables, and I'm also a server there. And I'm, I'm actually at their sister uh, location. I bartend there as well. Oh man, you're all over the place. I like to be, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. No, it's a it's a great place. I've been there for a couple months, and I love it. It's just a great group of people. Food's great. Atmosphere's great. Oh yeah, they, they seems like it's going to be super cool. Yeah, absolutely. Super no, it's it's a and this is a very different thing for me too because like I just moved from New York, and I used to have like a desk job working in like schools having to do with music and audio, and this is a total shift, and I love every minute of it. It's awesome. So was that the plan? Were you like, I'm, I'm going to move to Savannah? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I'm going to find a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, okay, so here, I, uh, I'm going to have a total life shift here. Yeah, I've known Andy, Tom, and Ricardo for years, and I've always really liked them, and they've always been really good. And I mentioned to Andy I was going to move, and he was like, hey, we're open to this place. You should come do it. And I was, I, I trust him and would follow him into the gates of hell if I had to. So, like, I was ready to do it, man. I was, And it's been great. And, and they're, they're all just really smart and freakishly talented, you know, both with the food stuff and music stuff and things like that so yeah i didn't know that ricardo uh, is a is a trained yeah. musician and so andy went to juilliard he's a classically trained oboist like and tom is a magnificent drummer like they're all like really interesting people yeah but they just wanted to open restaurants and bars yeah well you know because they they worked for a long time but like andy has been a bartender for a long time tom has been a bartender for a long time rick worked in events and it's just like the, the kind of the perfect mesh with the three of them you know so and it's great it's really it's a real treat yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, not missing New York much then, huh? You know, it's really strange. Like, very rarely in life does one actually realize they made the right decision and, like, not have any real regrets about it. And I've definitely feel like I made the right move, man. And I'm a lifer, too. I'm from New York my whole life. I've never lived anywhere else except for now Georgia for two months. So, really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty wild. I mean, that is a major culture shift, though. It is. But, you know, I was visiting here a lot for a long time. I have some other friends in town. I've been coming here for about 10 years. And I just fell in love with the place and the people and made some great friends. And, you know, the cocktail scene down here is great. The food scene down here is great. And, yeah, I just fell in love with it. Now I'm here and really into it. Yeah, take that, New York. Please. Take that, New York. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's interesting, though, because I'm a big food and drink person, too. So coming from New York and my knowledge of that stuff and going out there, 
and bringing that here and seeing the cool, there are really cool pocket things all over the place in this whole region. I mean, you obviously mm -hmm. know that you have a show about that. I'm looking for so, it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's really cool, like when you find these very talented people doing really unique things and it's just kind of everywhere here. It's, it's pretty wild and yeah. unexpected. Somebody mentioned Seawolf to me, and I was like, what are they doing? I and mean, what a cool concept, too, right? Because right? it's like, it's like so highbrow different. and lowbrow, you know? Like, the, the oysters and the dogs. But I don't even like hot dogs, man. But then when I had those, I was like, oh, Wagyu beef hot dog. All right, this is like a different experience, you know? And it, it, it's been great, man. And the, the people there are just so fantastic. The regulars are great. Like, yeah. I feel like I'm just a sun machine with all this positive talk. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, you are you, you are lifting my spirits the second. That's I saw what I'm you. here to do, my friend. That's what I'm here to do. <laughs> lifting my spirits, gonna have some spirits. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh man, it's gonna be a good day at Sea Wolf, I'm, everyone. I'm feeling it. I feel that way too. I think it's gonna be a good year. Right? Yeah. 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 After a yeah. weird year, it's After gonna be a, a good one. Year. Definitely, man. Hell yeah, Ryan. Yeah, man. <laughs> Absolutely. God, I'll talk to you, man. Yeah, Let's we just will. keep driving around for hours. I don't need to go to work today. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna make a whole show about this. <laughs> this is the Sean and Ryan show. That's right. Here we go. And now uh, let's start. <laughs> cool, man. Cool, man. Well, thanks for letting me uh, ride you around. Thank for a you. Minute. Appreciate the ride, man. Yeah, I guess uh, we're uh, we're pulling in now, so yeah. I guess we're gonna go inside and meet the chef and the bartender and the, uh, the owner and the manager and all the people. Absolutely. All the sea wolves. Yeah, all the sea lobos. All the sea wolf lobos. <laughs> yeah, man, totally. <laughs> Dude, it was a pleasure talking to you, man. You too, sir. Absolutely. You're gonna be here for a few more hours, right? We're hanging out, cool. yeah. Cool. All right, uh, let's, go meet the, uh, let's go meet everyone. Yes. Woo! 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 <laughs> <laughs> A meeting or something? Yeah, we're planning <laughs> like the, the date for you today, so pull a chair. All right, cool. cool. Let's hang out. Uh, Jordan's gonna go do Jordan things, <laughs> and we'll hang out. Uh, hello, my name is Rob Lana. <laughs> I'm the chef here at Sea Wolf on Tybee Island. I am originally from Chicago. Um, I was a restaurant chef in Wisconsin for a while. Um, during the pandemic, I packed up my car and drove to Savannah and I met these gentlemen um, and here I am before you today. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Ricardo Ochoa, yeah, I'm uh, originally from Venezuela but I've been in the U.S. for my entire adult life and I'm here in Savannah, Georgia and on Tybee Island being a partner with these two fellas in a, on the Sea Wolf and enjoying being behind the bar as well. A lot of the times. Yeah. Good times. My name is Andrew Ripley. I'm one of the owners here at Seawolf and I do most of the bar program here. Who's this guy in the really cool shirt? I'm Tom Worley uh, from North Georgia originally. Moved here in 2005 and I love Savannah, love Tommy and wearing my Jerome uh, shirt. He's one of our bartenders at our other place, Lone Wolf. <laughs> it was his birthday yesterday. So. Happy so birthday, Jerome. Jerome. <laughs> You're still wearing him. Yeah, yeah. You're, I haven't changed wife. in two days. So. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering about that. So awesome. And the place is super cute too. Like, right. Thanks. Like, so yeah, the concept, you know, is mainly from Andy's uh, idea uh, of uh, the North Atlantic, but his girlfriend, uh, Caroline, who's she's the interior decorator for this whole thing. Cool. So all the all the little knickknacks and things that you see on the walls and you you, you look around at just basically either from her house or stuff that she found and it, they just work perfect you know and the whole concept of having the, the wood and all that is between andrew and and, and her yeah she has a knack for finding not only finding great stuff but finding it for no money <laughs> <laughs> no money and the, the, that little face up there that's the artist who made the shirt yeah. oh yeah that's it <laughs> oh yeah that's wrong yeah, 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 let's get a close-up up later on that no, for sure. <laughs> that was my plan who was like the mastermind who came up with the concept like to begin with or was it a collaboration so or? tom and i opened lone wolf lounge which is our the bar only no food over in starland district in savannah two years ago it was called lone wolf because i had been working at a bar and i recently quit there and we had an event where like all the OG cocktail bartenders got together and had a tiki night and they made a flyer for it and they said all the bartenders and where they worked. So when they put my name down, I recently quit. So they said, 
Andrew Ripley, Lone Wolf. That's the <laughs> name for our marketing from. Really? So we. Because you were the lone wolf, you were unemployed. They had yeah. no they, they had, you had no home. Taking it easy. That's where that name came from. And then we, we wanted to do something out, a location out here as well. And we got all kinds of dumb ideas, so see what was it. Seemed like a good name. Cool. Because we were on the way out here, I was like, what is a sea wolf? Is it like, is it like a like a porpoise of some kind? <laughs> it's the matter. Is, is it furry? I don't know. Yeah, there, there are sea wolves, definitely. There's also uh, some mythical. Uh, Creature up in uh, like the Alaska area, it's a sea wolf, but yeah. So yeah. he hangs out with um, the, the big. Yeah, yeah, he's out. Yeah, he's out. Yeah, I yeah, mean, there's a famous Jack London book also. called The Sea Wolf, and um, so we wanted to do something a little more like cold weather, North Atlantic, fresh seafood, not, stand out, not fried kind of feel. So that's why Sea Wolf seemed like a good. We want that port city vibe instead of the beach bum vibe. Dig it. How do you end up with Ricardo over here? Well, Andrew and I have known each other for 20 years. We are actually both classically trained musicians and we've played in the orchestra and I hang out at the Lone Wolf a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and I was part of all these uh, ideas at some point. And, um, you know, I live on, on the island and I say, well, I want to jump in. I want to be a partner. And uh, the idea of having food is especially interesting to us because we were always you know, drinking at the Lone Wolf and saying, oh, you know, this glass of wine would be great. It would go really well with a hot dog, you know, or, <laughs> <Perfect>. or <laughs> this, like this cocktail, <laughs> this cocktail would go really well with an oyster. This was like last night. Though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so all of a sudden we're just like, well, why don't we get a, a restaurant that has oysters and hot dogs, you know? So we started this concept and, and uh, this idea is just kind of, organically came to life. We also like vegan food. We like veg vegetarian food and I don't think there's enough of that. So we got those three aspects, you know, you get your oysters and uh, clams and then you get your uh, hot dogs and cage meats. Yeah, your Americana, your seafood. And, uh, yeah. Serpentine. Yeah. Serpentine. <laughs> we have the vegan section, which is always vegan, like right off the menu. You can alter it to make it non-vegan, but the idea is that you can just order out like this and no, no thought. <laughs> no thought. And then also our regulars are getting to try different things all the time and also developing vocabulary. Like we're all learning about, you know, different hams and cheeses and oysters and stuff together, learning how to talk about them. It's a community effort. Yeah. Nice. And on top of that, you get the combination of all these wonderful spirits that we have behind the bar and the wine and beers that you can combine with the food and that's like they're delivering picked to do that too. So is it on the menu, like every of the, the like pairing on the menu or? It's a conversation. It's right. a conversation. I like it. When did you come along, Rob? Um, my girlfriend uh, told me about the project that these guys were doing and I just uh, sent a resume and uh, Chef Nick Mueller set all this up. Um, so, so he called me back and I came out and they told me the hot dogs, oysters and vegan food and I was like, all right, and then like I kind of thought about it, and I was like, I can do this. Like I mean, it's happened. So I came back out and like kind of was like, this is like my take. And we all talked about hot dogs. That was one of my favorite places in Chicago, and it was just a uh, it was a crazy concept that made sense to me. Because it's he's crazy. Like, he's like, have you ever heard of hot dogs before? <laughs> and I have the hot dogs book up on the back bar. <laughs> so, yes, we have. <laughs> <laughs> so he came in like five days before we opened for the first time. So. We, we had to like transition to his menu as we opened, but it's been pretty seamless. They yeah. hired me two days uh, before we opened. <laughs> two days before they opened. <laughs> yeah. Hey, buddy, um, we're gonna need you to you know, do this. That was awesome. I was door dashing at the time, so I was very, very <laughs> pleased to get new, back. He was very new to town. So <laughs> yeah, I just got here. I couldn't find a job. I was door dashing. It's a rough year to open a restaurant yeah, or do was, anything involved in the industry. Super sure. excited to open a COVID restaurant. <laughs> All right, so. We've got a really good team in the back, and I guess that's something we should touch on too. We've got Patrick and Nicole back there. We've got Wes. We've got, I mean, who else is in? I'm sorry. We, we're, we got I don't James want to and Trey or Line Pig. Like yeah. Nicole and Patrick are both executive chefs. So due to COVID, I think a lot of kitchens are like this. It's like people are kind of desperate. So I think like I have a kitchen full of just talent. Yeah. I've never had this much talent before and it's at a tiny little place and we just cook really cool stuff. We're trying to it, use that while we while we can and, and come up with something where there's so much 
potential energy in the bag to That's, translate that into actual this, effort here. Because not everybody made it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or made it, just there was just so many, this whole year has been disruptions. And it's kinda, I mean, you know, all, it's, all the chefs at the hotel is getting laid off. Oh yeah, right? like, absolutely. So, I mean, that's, yep. that's hundreds and hundreds that's of chefs. That's why I'm in Savannah. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. that. And just like that, like that, we have servers that are just first class you know, too. And bartenders that it just entertainers, they teach people about the wines, they explain the, the beers that we have and the cocktails. So it's 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 a fun place, you know, when it yeah. comes out to that. I think there's a lot of pretension sometimes with food and it doesn't, you know, no, nobody's fault. People take their work very seriously, but it is just food and drinks and everybody has to eat and drink. So you should have some fun with it and learn with it. We don't know, I mean, we don't know everything, but you know how you learn, you, you drink everything. <laughs> <laughs> or you eat everything. You, know, you have to you eat and you drink everything. Yeah, that's literally how you do it. You yeah. try it and then boom, you're there. We're here. So uh, let's walk through um, what, I'm gonna, what we're gonna be trying today, I guess. Mr. Rob. Oh, uh, we will start with a chicken liver creme brulee. Chicken liver creme brulee. Right, so I gotta get this pot heated up first. A little bit of oil. Uh, the idea is just to get a nice ear on the liver, the onions, and the garlic. This has been cured overnight. All right, so liver first. And the liver is going to get some sea salt and black pepper. Onions going second. <clears throat> the garlic goes in on top to give it a little bit of protection. And just let it get a nice sear on it. The next part of this is going to be the eggs that are behind you. They are in a immersion circulator. The way that I do these, like this is technically a custard. Um, I've made ice cream out of this before, I'm sure. Chicken liver ice cream sounds amazing. <laughs> but um, this is a traditional custard. What I have found is that these sous vide eggs, they create a very light texture because you don't actually have to cook the egg yolks on the stove with the cream. I have never had a meat custard before. <laughs> well, I hope you like it. If not, feel free to tell me that I suck. <laughs> I'm sure it's it, amazing. It, it looks like something my grandfather would have absolutely adored so far. He was a big liver and onions guy. Like, <laughs> you don't get that much anymore, but he would take a raw onion and he, that's, he, he would eat it. He was one of those guys. He just, I've like seen an apple for it. I remember when I was a kid, whenever we went to Country Buffet, my dad always thought the liver and onions was steak. <laughs> and then he'd get back to the table and be all mad. <laughs> Like, this is not steak. This isn't steak. My mom's like, honey, you do it every time. <laughs> <laughs> so we got some cook going on here. I'm gonna get this liquor in and start a little fire. I'm not gonna completely burn the liquor off because I like liquor. So when it gets about halfway there, I'm gonna cover it in cream. That's gonna leave some of the liquor left to actually be tasted in the dish. Take it that far, I'm gonna put her out with cream. Adios to the fire. Now this just needs to come to a boil quickly. Then it is gonna go into a Vitamix and I'm gonna slowly drop in the sous vide eggs all right, so this is now boiled. <clears throat> I'm gonna get the mixture into the Vitamix. All right. So if you're working with sous vide eggs, it's basically a poached egg. So once you crack it, you have a perfect egg. Oh, look at that. And if you wanna take a look at the viscosity, the yolk is beautiful. Uh -huh. So that is what I, think of as a perfect egg. All right, so that is a finished product. As you can see, like it's not thick. It is a, it's very. It looks like a, it looks like a milkshake. It's quite soupy. Yeah, oh. it's, it's not as thick as you would, you would think it was going to be. It's more like a frosting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna dump this into ramekins quickly. And then uh, I'm gonna fill it up with water and cook it for about 30 minutes. And that is that. Then it has to chill overnight. 
Cool. So this is the exact same thing that I made yesterday. So it'll look at it like it's obviously, it's a custard. As said, a chicken custard. Put some sugar on top of it. Might give it a torch here. This is our house peach pepper jelly. It has jalapenos in it, so it has a bit of heat to it. Goes directly on top. This particular item goes on our charcuterie board. It's kind of just a nice upsell for the board. And that is... That is her. There she bed. is, huh? There she is. It's In all of her glory. All of her glory. Woo! Looks delicious. Meow. I'm hanging out with the amazing chef owner, bartender, Andrew Ripley, and he's gonna pair some drinks with the dishes we're gonna eat today, so. Yeah, so the kitchen put out some delicious food for us. I'm gonna make some cocktails to pair with it. Uh, we've got that creme brulee chicken liver mousse, which mm -hmm. is awesome. You could do that with champagne, would be my first thought, or uh, like maybe a gin, apricot, kind of sour, to go along with that richness of that. All right. I'm gonna do something a little culinary, though. I'm gonna do our uh, Samoan dillweed, which is kind of like a, a Scandinavian Mai Tai. I'm using some aquavit, which is a Scandinavian spirit. It's caraway and dill, and that's a nice holiday concoction. Also, I've got a Martinique Agricole rum. This actually grows in salt water, the, the cane that they use for this, so it has a little bit of brininess to it already. And then I'm using some rum and some other stuff. Let me put it together for you. Got. This is a lemon. I got a little bit of absinthe. I use a dropper because I want to... So I've got these guys uh, and also some orgeat, which is an almond liqueur. I got them combined a little cheater because we try to make our cocktails real fast here. And we're using as the, the main spirit, that this uh, is kind of a modifier rum. I'm using Barbados. Rum is our main spirit for this. Go out, a little shake and shake. This man's got the arms for it. Definitely has the arms for it. Christmas straw. We're festive people. We're and festive. I got to, I'm gonna reach over here for one second. So since we're dealing with dill. Dealing with dill. I mean, what is the dill? What is the dill? This is the dill, people. This is the dill. This is your Samoan dill weed. It's got a blend of rums, orgeat, and aquavit. Delish. Uh, Jordan, you ready for this one? Yeah, I thought you might be. Okay, so we now have the chicken liver mousse creme brulee, which we are going to pair with Samoan dill, Samoan dill weed. The Samoan dill weed cocktail comes accoutrement with actual dill weed. All right, so I guess we're just gonna snap this bad boy in half. I'm gonna hear back. And it's for you. For you, it's for you. And for me. Ah. And we get this drink ready because we're gonna try it together. And I guess just dive in there. Dip. Dip it. When you dip, I dip. We dip. I got on the. Beep beep. Mm hmm. All right. 
All right, so, here we go. Uh, liver mousse creme brulee. Cheers. Mmm. Mm-hmm. It's like robust and sweet. Nothing like you would think it tastes. It's really good. Mm-hmm. All right, and we're gonna try it with the drink. The whole key here is that they go together. So, you ready? Yeah, sure. Ready? Okay. Take. Mm-hmm. Oh, it goes really well together. Mm. Very good. Mmm. I can't. There's so many different layers to flavors that are in this drink and this mousse. It's hard to articulate other than they go together brilliantly. It's a sweet, savory, oh, and, you know, really good for a nice cold gray day, too. And then it's just complimented so well that I can't be drinking. You'll be, you'll be drunk. You'll be drunk. You'll be able to drive home. Nope, so, that's only a 15-minute right. drive. That's that was fantastic, and um, let's try the next thing, shall we? Let's do it. Nikki, this is for you. <laughs> what are we doing now? All right, so we're going to do a Sonoran hot dog. First, I must cook the bacon. Cook the bacon. Put a little stamp on here. We use split-top New England rolls for our hot dogs exclusively here, unless it's vegan. And then we use pretzel. I'll split open. The reason behind this is because you can get a butter toast on both sides. Our hot dogs are Kobe beef. So these get on the hot part. We love hams here. Beer. So it's some beer. booze, and just a little bit of oil. How do you get a Wagyu hot dog? Is it, like, is it a Japanese hot dog? Yeah, essentially. Um, it is all of the undesirables from... The Wagyu? Yep, just like a regular hot dog, but it's just very high quality. The texture of them, they're, they're incredible. If you're a hot dog guy, I'm all dog guy. This is your jam. Okay, so we have a house-made jalapeno relish. This is cotija cheese, cilantro. Everything comes with a pickle on the side. This is a poblano jalapeno coulis. Ooh. Mustard. Got and then mustard. I have beans that are whipped with pork fat. Refried? Refried beans whipped with pork fat. Refried yeah. beans with, because we're having a Mexican Wagyu hot dog today. Correct. Uh, we don't like the word fusion in, in our business. I think mashup maybe? Mashup? That sounds, that sounds I, cool I, to I me, guys. Know, I'm not sure. So I got my bun. The dog is going to go on top. Beans are next. That is what the pickle is for. These babies love to fall over. Onion relish. And the coulis are next. This is like medium spicy. Like I try not to kill people, but it is a bit hot. Mustard. Cotija cheese. And then this is uh, Ivy Bread street corn. No. So it's like a traditional. Um, it's just charred corn, mayonnaise, cotija cheese, and some chili flake. It's a staple in Mexican cuisine. That makes it very special. And then just a touch of cilantro. And I like to put the bacon right on top. So that is our Sonoran hot dog. Now, Sonoran hot dog. Oh my God, it's... It's a tower of Wagyu, delicious Mexican. Right, here we go. Wow.
we're next we're having Sonora. a hot dog, huh? Sonora so. hot dog. So Sonora, in northern Mexico, has their own version of agave spirit called Bacanora. Bacanora. And it doesn't have the smoke of a mezcal. It has that nice earthiness. It's got kind of a nice bright uh, floral quality from the plant. But I'm doing this kind of like a three-hander. You got your hot dog, you got your straight spirit, and I'm gonna make a little sangrita of fruit juices and spice to go with it. All right. So we sip and sip? Yeah. Sip and sip. Man, just a little bit of one of our house-made hot sauces. This is from Peppers grown in Tom's Garden. Thanks, Tom's Garden. <laughs> and then I got some of our house-made grenadine, which is a pomegranate base. Orange and lime. I'm gonna put a little bit of worm salt in this as well. I wanna I say what? Worm salt. Worm salt. What is in the tarnation is worm salt? This is for, for some reason. This is like 20 bucks for this for some reason. Worm salt. So this is a combination of salt, chili, and worm bodies. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. All right. It's like the mezcal worms, like the yeah. little worms that are in the mezcal. That's what's in. Whoa. So these, I guess they used to put the worms in the mezcal way, way back because they had to prove that they weren't watering it down. Like if, the, if the worm didn't decompose, it was because it was preserved in, in the alcohol. High proof. Ah. That makes sense. All right. I'm just gonna single strain this. You can have a little bit of ice, little ice bits in there for texture. So That's going to be your Bacanora with Sangrita. Bacanora Sangrita. Bam, bam. Sip and sip. Jordan, you ready for some Bacanora? Woo! Yeah. Wow. We have the Sonoran hot dog. It is a Mexican style Wagyu beef hot dog. And we have it with uh, some Bacanora. Bacanora. And then we're going to sip that alongside Sangrita. Sangrita. Thanks. Thanks, Andrew. Man is on point. Okay, so. All right, I'm going to take one bite of one end, oh and you're going to take a bite of the other end. <laughs> yeah? Do that? I'll, I'll take no, the paper. No, no, no. Switch around. Switch around? Switch around. Okay, you ready? Can I put my hair back? <laughs> my hair has to keep it a little mess as possible. Let's She's agreeing to do this. She never agrees to do this. Well, I have to put my hair back first. Okay. 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 All right, you ready? One. Leave her hand. Okay, thank you. Okay, ready? all right. One. one, two, three, go. Mmm. 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 Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. That hot dog is so big and so good that I must thank the cow that got the massage that it came from. <laughs> because it is to die for. For real. Thank you, cow. Um, we got to try it with this stuff, so I think we sip and sip. So I'm gonna sip. You do one after the other. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna throw up. And sip. Don't throw up. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> this is. What? I can't even. Wow. Like, I enjoy the tequila. The tequila's <laughs> good, but this is out of the world. Did you try it? A little spicy? Yeah, burns. <laughs> you gonna get your bottle of poop? It's Mezcal. You gonna grab your bottle of poop? Woo! <laughs> it's Mezcal, right? Bacanora. Ooh! <laughs> Sonora. I even need that. You. <laughs> mm. That hit my throat. Mm. So, Jordan loves it. Cool. <laughs> All right, Nikki, you are going to go to town <laughs> on this and. Yeah. I need and a minute. Hold on. 
<laughs> I really need a minute. Woo. I hit. Alrighty, ready? All ready, what are we doing? All right, so we're doing ramen. This is a vegan ramen broth. It is miso based. How'd you come up with this? Um, a joint I was at in Wisconsin, uh, the the old guy, like the, the owner's dad, um, mm -hmm. he decided he was vegan, but he like still ate fish. It was really weird. So okay. he wanted a really good vegan dish and I just like researched how to make like traditional shoyu. Most of the, the, the ingredients I have to order from Korea. And, uh, <laughs> I just had to Google, like make sure they were all vegan and, and then I got it. And it stays right here. I don't even have it written down. When we serve it, we offer an addition of pork belly, which is cured, smoked, and then cooked in pork fat. And there's also the eggs. Those are, that's like my favorite usage of a sous vide egg is for ramen. Right. These are yaki soba noodles, which are also vegan. These are pickled Fresno chilies here. These are marinated enoki mushrooms. This is Gucci Gang sauce. This is my prize sauce. Um, it's Gucci Gang based. Uh, so I named it Gucci Gang. It has about 17 ingredients. And then togarashi goes on top of the egg if it gets an egg and then just a mix of black and white sesame. All right, so we got this guy pretty hot. I'm gonna go ahead and put it into the bowl. I'm gonna tweeze out noodles here. All right, now the garnishments. To start with Gucci Gang on the side here. A couple pickled Fresnos. The marinated enoki. Cilantro. So at this point, this is a vegan dish. I will put the egg on it. Take away its veganness. And top it with togarashi. All right, there she is, huh? There she is. There she is, she's beautiful. Right, I'm gonna have to fly this out very carefully. You ready? Oh my God, vegan ramen. We got to show you ramen that we're trying to pair with. I'm gonna go with the honey and ginger. This is a just an easy, simple take on a, what a penicillin would be. We call it the five hour energy because it's made with tequila and a little spritz of mezcal on top. We got a little lemon. I got local honey. And then we make a uh, syrup out of ginger and when I do that I combine both uh, raw uncooked ginger and then we also cook the remnants of the juiced ginger with the syrup to impart the cooked flavor of ginger. So two different chemicals ah. in the end so they both have their own kind of heat and spice and flavor so I combine those together. It's double threat ginger. Yeah. Then some tequila. I'm just using a simple over tequila for this, and then we're gonna do a little spritz on top for smoke. Mm. Then I put a little 
fresh cut of ginger on top. And I got a little atomizer of mezcal. And it's that good. is five hour energy. Five hour energy. A little spritz of mezcal. Yep. Oh. Well, for me, a little for the drink. Only fair. <laughs> Only fair. <laughs> All right, I'm super excited to actually try this with that soup. Mm. Cheers. Yeah. Okay, Jordan's recovered. <laughs> She's back. Yeah, she. Are you good? I don't know. Have you? Okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. All right. So now we have the shoyu ramen and the five-hour energy accompaniment. So, ladies first. <laughs> I don't think you know how to eat this, so I'm just gonna get ready for it. No, I can. You can do it. So, okay. Yes. She's got this. Funny enough. I'm gonna wait patiently and watch her reaction. Well, I'm not gonna take a bite. Do you like it? What do you think? No spice to it. Mmm. What's the spice in it? Mmm. I don't know if it has a whole lot of spice. What's the spice? What? Gochi gyro. Gochi gyro. The spice is gochi gyro. Where is that from? Korea. Korea. Ooh. So That's a kick. It's got it's got a really nice umami to it with that miso that just kind of fills your palate. It's 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 sweet. It's savory. It's I would have it for breakfast, <coughs> lunch or dinner. It's so good. All right, we got to try it with this thing. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna sip. Oh, that's refreshing. No, you're gonna like that. Mm. It's light. Refreshing, not too like alcohol bitey. I would, yeah. She's, she's keeping that. <laughs> keeping this. It's all hers now. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki, have fun with this. <laughs> Woo! All right, we're here with Patrick Carruthers. What are you showing us? Today? Ceviche. Ceviche. All right. Sea wolf ceviche. Let's yeah. Oh. All right. A little bit of lemon and lime juice. So. We have some really nice Meyer lemons from the island here on Tybee. Chili oil, and some very, very, very thinly sliced garlic that I have here. Hit a little bit of chili oil in there, just to round things out a bit. A little cilantro. Mix that on up good. It's cooking with acid, right? Yes, the acidity from the lemon and lime juice will essentially cook the outside of the fish. Not all the way through, if we were to let this marinate overnight per se, all the way through you'd be cooked, but that's, you don't want that. It's gonna be really tough and chewy and it's just, no, one, no one likes that very much. Um, however, in Peru, back then, yes, the, uh, they would use that to preserve their fish for a little longer, that kind of thing. Today though, we're gonna go ahead and throw it on in there because this is some very, very fresh fish. We just got this fish today from Russo's. It's some very, very beautiful black sea bass. It just came out of the ocean, huh? Yeah. Black yeah, sea bass. Yeah. In the bottom of this, I have a blood orange and pisco gelé. Uh, pisco is, if no one knows, from Peru. Um, it's one of their national drinks, as is ceviche, mm -hmm. one of their national foods. All right, we're just gonna go ahead and spoon it on in there now. Right over top of this nice gelé here. Mmm. It looks so refreshing, like. Yeah, you want it to be refreshing, but also have a little bit of a kick to it. So you can go home and make sweet love to your wife afterwards. <laughs> like the way you think, sir. You hear that, Jordan? <laughs> happy wife, happy love. That's right. All right, and now here I have some table beer that Creature Conference releases once a year around this time. And I'm going to make a very nice foam with it, a very nice light foam. That is the coolest little whipper thing I've ever seen in oh, my life. Oh yeah, this thing is a lot of fun. It saved me a bunch. And it makes you look really cool in the kitchen too. So now we're gonna kind of try and make this foam look nice and pretty. Place that guy right on top. We have a little bit of blood orange 
reduction here that is very, very reduced. A little bit of that on top. And that's that. Ladies and gentlemen, ceviche by Chef Patrick. Yeah. Wow. And last, but definitely not least. So our Zippa is a very popular cocktail here. We designed it to go specifically with oysters. It's gonna be great with the, uh, with your ceviche too that Pat made for us. But it's all about the interplay of gin, lemon, and absinthe. And I got a little extra added to that as well for interest. Suze is a gentian root based liqueur from France and the absinthe. And like I said, I just use a little bit. I mean, Anna's goes a long like way. To measure it, yeah. If you add the right amount, it just is an undercurrent and it doesn't dominate. It's not like biting into a black licorice black or anything. It can add like chocolate to a, to a barrel aged spirit, or it can add a really nice complexity to something like this. Cool. So I said lemon, but also I'm adding a little bit of grapefruit too. Like grapefruit adds. A nice earthiness along with the seeds. And some sugar. You want to have body in a cocktail, you don't want it to be thin. It's not the experience you want. And then I'm using Leopold's gin out of Denver. It's my favorite gin. It's a nice botanical or a nice citrusy American gin. Doesn't have quite a, a heart of a juniper quality that a London dry will have. Doesn't taste like a Christmas tree. Yeah. I have one that tastes like a Christmas tree though. So that's <laughs> that's a, another cocktail. That always reminds me of my grandpa's liquor cabinet. <laughs> so this gets the most shake because it's gonna go up. It's never gonna get colder. It's never gonna get more diluted than when I serve it. I'm double straining it because I don't want very smooth. Chips in this. Super smooth. You can see the gentian root liqueur gives it that bright yellow, and then the absinthe gives it what's called a lausch, makes it kind of jade like, kind of smoky looking, mm -hmm. kind of translucent. That's All the zipper. Right. That's the zipper. I'm thirsty. Thirsty and hungry. All right. Boom. Zoom. All right, and last but not least, we have our black sea bass ceviche served with this beautiful zippa. And Jordan, have you had, you've had ceviche. This yeah. is a new kind of take on the ceviche. Uh, grab your fork. All right. You had shrimp ceviche. I did. Th this, this, is, this is actual Season. fish. So let's get in there. A little bit of everything, a little red onion. All right. Cheers, cheers. Cheers, cheers. cheers. Here we go. Mm. It's got a real citrusy zest. I'm not mad at it. It's actually really good. Mm -hmm. the, the fish soaks up all the juices and the flavor and just kind of holds them in there. So it, you bite, well, into, you bite into it and just ex, it's it's exposes the fish. It's not fishy. It's just exposes the flavor. Very good. Mm -hmm. That's so good. All right, you like some VJ. You just ate raw fish that was cooked in citric acid. <clears throat> and you liked it. Good. That's exciting stuff, people. We're really making progress here. So, um, yeah. I'm the oh. biggest eater in America, probably. <laughs> well, like, you're doing real well. I don't think you're the biggest. Well, like, Not no, anymore, anyway. Not I anymore. was. You, you were. You definitely were. If you would have asked me like four years ago to try this, 
right? I just walked out the door. Well, let's try. It, let's try it with the drink. The zipper. The zipper. Yeah, ladies first. You try the zipper first. What's in the zipper? Deliciousness. Find out. It was made by mixologist extraordinaire Andrew, specifically for this dish. And you like it? It's good. It's different. It's not what it is. But it's good. Mm. It's it's the uh, it's the it's the anise from the absinthe. from the absinthe. It's the anise from the absinthe. It's you're like, hmm, what is that? Hmm. But it does Very go really good. well with the lime and the cilantro, and yeah, it just really works it together works. so well. Bravo, everybody! You guys, thank are, you. Sea Wolf, you're amazing. I love what you're doing. I can't wait to you know send all of my friends out here to have a great time with you boys because. You rock. You all rock. You're fantastic. You know who's going to love this the most, though? Nikki. <laughs> yeah. Woohoo! And then we have some oysters. My sous chef and I will do a shock off for you, and uh, Patrick is going to win. <laughs> He's the oyster ninja. I am, I am setting myself up to get my butt to be on TV. Cool. I'm super excited to see <laughs> this competition go down. All right, so apparently. These people are professional shuckers, and they're gonna have a little contest to see who can shuck the fastest. And I would participate, but I like my hands. So, are we timing this or something, or just whoever finishes first? We're just trying to beat Patrick. So trying to beat ahead. Patrick. <laughs> Patrick is the reigning champion. So, uh, all right, on your marks, get set, shuck! Looks like we got Patrick's at two. Rob's at two. I got a crab. Ooh, good luck. Good luck. Oh, Patrick's at three. He's working on four. Rob's almost at four. Patrick's falling behind. Uh, Cole's at five. Oh, Rob's at five. Patrick's up to six. He's going for six. Oh, Nicole crushing it. Nicole crushing it. Beating, <laughs> beating reigning champion Patrick out and Rob. Rob, bring it up the rear. <laughs> oh, stop. Guys, go, you honey. all did fantastic. You did way better than I could have possibly ever done. Not too bad either. And those oh, oysters are huge. They are huge. Good lord, look at the size of those things. Three points from New Jersey. We just got them out today. Bravo, everybody. Bravo, should we eat some? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's eat one. Hello. Throw me a opa. Yeah. Hot sauces. Do you have some hot sauces? Salty noodles. Yes. Yes. I don't know. It's that. It's that. Is it really? Yeah. You cut clean through. I cut this guy in half. I salad. This is shit. Yeah. 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 All right, what is the most challenging part about running Seawolf? Just the amount of, sheer amount of time and energy. Yeah. It's it takes a lot around, of around the clock. A lot of focus. There's so many it. details we want, right? And No, I love the dynamics that we have. We all get along really well, but we also just kind of fall into our own job, you know? So, you know, Tom here is not only a bartender, but he's also like the guy behind the systems. A project <laughs> like this size and not to, I mean, it's not like a giant place, but the amount of work is like so much more than one, one or two people can do. Like with Lone Wolf, we definitely do everything there. In the beginning, we were like every, doing everything and it's manageable, but out here it's like, I can't do what he does. I can't even really get involved in everybody else. So there's so much to do, you know? So we all had to like definitely. The kitchen like multiplies everything by five. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, just from our bar experience. Like, Throwing out booze is easy. Yeah. You know, you, as soon as you throw food in, it definitely mm -hmm. yeah. makes we're it lucky more to I mean that Thanks, on camera now. <laughs> <laughs> it's official. It's official. Um, so, uh, what's your favorite part about running and working at Seawolf? I mean, the 
You day off? Yes. Looking forward to Mondays. Monday. We're also giving the opportunity to people from Savannah to do something different and just take the the ride here, which is only 15 minutes away. Mm -hmm. You know, if you think about it, or 20. Oh, I've told so many people since like I heard about it. Like, yo, have you been out to Sea Wolf? Like, no, what's Sea Wolf? Like, we definitely try to organically grow the business instead of just like throwing ourselves at advertising. It's more important to get the workings of this restaurant figured out first and then when we get to the busy season we're not like what happened you know i mean this whole year definitely did throw us for a loop we were kind of shooting for march and then all of a sudden yeah, this year didn't really pan out so well so right. we're on the tail end of all of this but you're still here yeah we are here yeah, still here still <laughs> and here. as we grow organically we don't even have a phone here so. yeah right so yeah how, okay so i <laughs> when i did try to call i I, went, I had to go to facebook to get the number because it wasn't on google and then I found the number on Facebook and I called it and it was the Hollow Notes hotline. <laughs> <laughs> we actually we got a Facebook message for somebody that was that wanted to order takeout or something. They wanted to know some detail. And they're like, We called your number and it's wrong. They gave us a porn it was a porn site or something, a porn <laughs> number. And I was like, I like where your head's at. <laughs> but it's Hollow Notes. But it's Hollow Notes. <laughs> it's just... 1 900 Hollow Notes. <laughs> 2 99 and 99 cents after. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, if you're in Tyco Island, Georgia, you literally have no choice but to come to Sea Wolf, have some oysters, have some hot dogs. If you're vegan or vegetarian, you are totally welcome as well. Uh, these guys are fantastic gentlemen. I love all of them. Thank you. We love you, too. <laughs> Thank you, Jarav, Ricardo, Thomas, and Andrew. And uh, I'm going to get out of here and let you guys uh, get on with the rest of your evening. But, uh, Sweet. Sounds good. Rock and roll all. Uh, uh, uh. Sea Wolf! Woo! All right. All right. We fucking Sea Wolf it. I, no, I can't say that. All right. We fucking Sea Wolf Okay, d uh, that was fantastic. Did we solve the mystery on what exactly a Sea Wolf was? No. No, not really, but I think it's best. Well, he said it was a there was a thing from like in Alaska. It was a sea. Yeah, he said it was a mythical creature from Alaska. Alaska, yeah. Yeah, mythical. A sea. A sea wolf. I guess it's like the ocean. Yeah. You know? Oh, very bone says. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I mean, this is, that's what I would contribute to be a sea wolf. Too shy. Anyway, they're a fantastic group of people. That was a whole lot of fun. Um, Nikki, what was your favorite part? Mm, my favorite part, I really liked. Oh, wow. That was so tasty. And also the ginger. Mm, the digital ginger. Oh, I didn't try that. Well, maybe, I don't think they're meant to eat, are they? No, no, no. He had to make 30 of them for it. Oh, dang it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I forgot that you guys. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Did you have gingerbread? Yes. Yeah, how was the gingerbread? It thing? was delicious. <laughs> no, he, made, he made 30 of them for that, for that, um, for his charity, yes. the Bob thing that was over, which is lovely. Jordan, what was your favorite part? <laughs> well, um, where to start? They gave me lots of um, of drinks. So Jordan's a little tipsy now. But I had a, <laughs> no, but I had an excellent time. Otherwise, my favorite thing was probably the ceviche. Really? Yeah. Mm, that's a brunch. Yeah. Wow. Ceviche. How about that? Yeah. Wow. I mean, I'm with, I'm with you. I really love that ramen. That ramen is so good. And it's vegan. The ceviche was amazing. Ceviche was really good. It, it was. was really good. And I'm not. And I'm not even a ceviche person or like raw fish. Like it was a was a black sea bass. Is mm -hmm. that? Yeah. 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 That's right. Holy crap! Yeah. Yeah. Like it's really good. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
That's really nice. Yeah. Isn't it? Um, oh, it's expensive. It's very color. light. It's got like hints of spice, but it's not overbearing. It tastes really good too. <laughs> Try the cocktail. Is this one? That's one. Is she all the <laughs> Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're right. This is like. Because this is like salty and it's got like the salty, um, slight spice to it. And then this is like really cool and refreshing. So, like, it kind of cuts through the spice and the salt. It goes really nicely.